Cisco Remote Expert Mobile, a user-to-user -user screen pop example. Let's start by looking at a quick demo. Our agent John Smith is logged into his Finesse Agent Desktop at extension 1000, which is a DX80 video endpoint. On his desktop, he has the Cisco Remote Expert Mobile gadget as well as a Google Maps gadget that shows the location of his callers. Our customer, Keith Griffin, is using one of our mobile apps. This Francisco Finance app is a simple location-aware app uh, that allows Keith to <clears throat> log in and check his balances as well as apply to any of our promotions. Here he fills out the mortgage pre-qualification form and clicks Expert SS uh, to get some help. Since there are no agents available at the moment, he is queued. Let's transition John to ready. He receives the call. He knows that it's from Keith, his information as well as where he's calling from and why he's calling. Furthermore, on the Manage Call tab, the location data that was sent from the application is mapped automatically to uh, Keith's location. Here, John can interact with this map, uh, change its mode, search for any other locations that are relevant uh, for this call, and as needed, initiate a co-browse session which sends a request to Keith. Keith accepts. Here John can take control, can annotate or push documents to Keith for review. What have you. So, what we have seen here is the simple use of UUI to pass data from the mobile app to, to the contact center agent. In this use case we passed the customer location and mapped it in, in a Google Maps gadget. However, this could have been the account number of key or any other relevant piece of information that could have uh, popped into a CRM gadget or any other uh, gadget that could enhance this experience between uh, John and Keith. So let's end our call. Log out our agent John. And, and see how we can accomplish this in your Remote Expert Mobile deployment. Okay, so in a Remote Expert Mobile deployment, enabling data passing with the user-to-user -user field requires eight steps. The first step is trusting the anonymous consumer access in REM. To do that, Let's go to our REM Administration Console, log in with your credentials. The default credentials are admin, admin. Click on Expert Assist and General Administration. In the Expert Assist Settings section, change the Anonymous Consumer Access to Trusted and hit Save. Step two is the cube changes. Cube by default does not pass unsupported or unrecognized SIP headers. We need to modify it so that it transparently passes all the SIP headers from the two endpoints. To do that, log into your cube box, your ISR, and in the voice service VoIP section under SIP, add pass-through headers unsupported uh, command. And remember to save as well. 
Next up is the CVP call server configuration. Let's log into the operations console. Under device management, click on the call server. Click on the SIP tab. And in the advanced configuration section, scroll down to the SIP header passing and add a new parameter here, uh, user-2-user dash dash user in the header name field and then click add. And remember to save and deploy. Next is the extraction of this new user to user uh, field in the UCCE script. Log in to the script editor and open the routing script that handles remote expert mobile calls. In this script, add a new set node. Objective here is to extract the contents of SIP header. Let's take a look at the OPC log which shows us the raw format of a, a new call request. In a new call request we see the SIP header field attached to the new call request and the contents of the SIP header is user to user colon the data. So our objective here is to extract the data portion and strip the user to user label. In order to do that, the easiest way would be to use a string uh, function to look for the colon character and strip everything that comes after into a call variable. And that's exactly what we are doing here in the formula editor. There is a built-in function called after. Our string 1 is the colon character, which we're going to be searching inside string 2, which is the SIP header. So we're going to find the colon, the first appearance of colon, and strip everything that comes after it and copy that to call variable 6. That's it. Next is the agent facing components namely the finesse gadget. There is a sample gadget at Cisco Developer Network. Log into your developer center account. Uh, click on the collaboration. Under collaboration, click on finesse sample gadgets. And about halfway down, there is the sample gadget for Google Maps screen pop. Click on the download link and extract the file, the package, to your web server. After extracting, you should see these five files. The XML file doesn't need any modifications. It should be used in your Finesse desktop layout. So you need to log in to Finesse Administrator and modify the desktop layout for your agents by including this new gadget specification. Make sure you replace the IP address here with the IP address uh, in your environment. Next is the Google Maps ScreenPub JavaScript file. Let's take a look at what this file looks like. When you open this file, right at the top is the API key vari variable. You need to replace this with your own Google Maps API key. If you do not have one, you can go to the developer network of Google and apply for a key, which is a very quick, instant uh, process. So after you get your key, enter it into the API key in the JavaScript file and save it. 
Normally, this is all that's needed in the JavaScript file, unless you want to use a different call variable to store the longitude and the latitude coordinates that are coming from the application. We are using call variable 6, as you can see here, and that's what we used in the previous step as well. In the UCCE script, we extracted and copied the call uh, location parameters into the variable 6. In the sample gadget that you will download, you will notice that call variable 3 is being used. In the UCCE script, as opposed to using 6, you could use call variable 3, which means you don't have to modify the JavaScript other than the API key. But for some reason, if you have to use a different call variable other than 3, you need to also make the same changes in the JavaScript and find all the instances of call variable 3 and replace it with the variable of your choosing. And there are two instances where you need to make that change. All right. Next up is the consumer side changes. In the mobile app, open Xcode. Make sure you are importing the framework core location. This framework allows you to identify the location. In the view controller, import the core location.h file as well as specify the, the conformance to the Location Manager Delegate Protocol. Next, in the implementation file, define an instance variable of type Location Manager. If you choose to, this could be a, a property that you define in the .h file as well. Next, as part of the delegate protocol, implement the two delegate methods that are shown here. One other change that you need to make is in the view did load method, uh, add these lines to allocate the location manager object, set the view controller as the, the self delegate. Uh, set up the accuracy desired, as well as start the location updates. So these five lines are required. When Keith clicked on the assist button, what happened is this action uh, is called. And in this action, we are basically building the, the SDK assist call uh, parameters. In the UUI, it's basically a text field that you can populate with any relevant information. In this case, we are uh, concatenating the latitude and longitude separated by comma. And we are making the, the API call to start assist. And this is about it. So, to recap, there are eight steps required to enable uh, UUI usage in an RE mobile deployment. Uh, there are data center component changes in RE mobile server, in the CVP call server, as well as UCCE script editor. And then there are agent facing changes, such as the finesse gadget. Uh, the JavaScript and the XML file uh, modifications. And lastly, the consumer facing components, which is the mobile app, or it could be the web page that the consumer interacts with. The web SDK also supports the UUI field. 
although we did not cover that in this example, but uh, we'll, we will be covering that in, in a future um, video. Thanks for watching.